episode number 107 of the Cage Fits Podcast. This week we're going to be talking about Kingdom Hearts 2.8, which is hilarious um, because last week we talked about Kingdom Hearts 2.9. That was so a feels very like, ill-timed po- podcast. Yeah, it was very <laughs> ill-timed. In, in case you guys don't know, like we record the podcast a couple days before it goes up, obviously, because we need time to like edit it and garbage. So we record things a couple days before, and usually it's not a problem, but when a major gaming event is happening in that like period between (laughs) recording and releasing episodes there's nothing we can do about that unfortunately because time is a subjective reality and that's just the way it goes so with us today you have your usual hosts of myself misty and me libra gkd and me coxon as our staff guest we have plums yay and finally as our member guest we have once again scarred nobody or tummer yay we have a full house this week, which I think is um, a sign that our new member guest system is working, um, which I'm happy about. Um, Pat for ourselves those, on the back. Yes. For those who haven't listened to an episode in a while, I'll go through it again quickly. Um, we have a new system for member guests. Uh, if you applied to be a member guest in the past, you're in it. You don't have to worry about like reapplying or anything. And so the process is still similar. You fill out the form that's with the podcast, give us some information. When you do that, we'll add you to the... Um, special group that has access to a special section (laughs) and in that section every week we will post up saying hey this is the episode that we're planning on doing like this is the topic this is when we're planning on doing it if you're interested and available for that time post and we will consider you and that's how we do it and it seems to be working out pretty well Yes, good job, yes. us. <laughs> yes. Um, so usually we talk about King Mertz news and updates, but that is our topic for the week, so we can just flow right into that. If you have been living under a rock for the past couple days, um, you will not know that Kingdom Hearts 2.8 was announced at Tokyo Game Show. You really should say the full title. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what even is the f- Kingdom Hearts 2.8 final chapter prologue? Is that it? Yeah, Am I, I missing yeah. a word final, in there? No, final, Conclusion I mean, Kingdom, or... Kingdom Hearts HD 2.8 Final Chapter Pro. <laughs> HD 2.8 Remix Final no, Chapter Remix. Pro. No, oh, there is no remix. No remix. remix. Okay, all right. But yeah, Final Chapter Prologue may be my... <laughs> Yeah, Kingdom Hearts continues to not disappoint with the titles. (laughs) Like, I remember when Dream Drop Distance, like, the full title was announced, because before we just knew it as Kingdom Hearts 3D, and we're like, Dream Drop Distance, like, oh, Square, you play in, but it's not that bad, but this is, it's that bad. It's that bad now. (laughs) Final chapter pro. Like, everything else about that title, I can let go. But it's that last part. Even two point eight. I can let I can <laughs> let two point eight go. Oh yeah. I can let two point eight go, but it's the final chapter. Like, why do you even need the final chapter prologue thing there? It's so it's, it's bad. Just, it's so I bad. Love it. I think that's like the king, <laughs> if, I think I think that that's what makes it Kingdom Hearts esque. You know, no, it needs to have a title no. like that. I, mean, I don't know for me. Like, I, mean, I mean, for someone that grew like not grew up, but like when I started playing i kind of started with two but then all the other games after that had absurdly long because i went i didn't finish one at first but like when i finally got into it those were the three games recoded for five sleep and three five eight over two days so for me like that's what makes it like it's not it's not it's not like that the title (laughs) is really long it's just that final chapter Final chapter prologue. <laughs> I think though that we're in an important uh, divide here, and that's something that is go- that we're going to talk about the big divide that this has caused. But like Cal, you're used to the series being fucking bad. Like you <laughs> yes. came in right when the series was getting to be fucking bad. So this and is I just think like that's why I understand it yeah. so well is that you guys kind of started with like easy Kingdom Hearts one <laughs> understandable story car- kind thing. I didn't finish Kingdom Hearts one until after. I finished a bunch of other, like, um, a bunch of other games. So I think that I, I don't know, maybe I'm just a bit full of myself, but I think I have a better understanding of what's going on because I just, that's what I was, like, born into. I think that you're, like, ready to understand these things because, again, you entered the series right when it was all getting crazy. Whereas, like, other people like me and Nick, and I'm going to guess Alex and Tumor, I'm not sure exactly, we came in at the beginning of the series, and we are used to Kingdom Hearts being, like, or not used to it, but we associate Kingdom Hearts with that first game, which was coherence. <laughs> the, problem, and... the problem with me isn't that, like, I would have rather them had some weird, bat bitten insane title for this collection, because... Final, you just don't put two contradicting things in the same <laughs> title. But it, it, they are two contradicting words, but they are descriptive. It is yes, the prologue yes. to the final chapter of Kingdom Hearts 3. And I guess in that sense, it is descriptive, like for people that are saying like, 
oh, okay, I need to get into Kingdom Hearts 3 and I need to catch up on things, so let me play the prologue to that final. But it's st it's still a f***ing <laughs> terrible title. Like, I would have preferred something like Birth by Sleep or Dream Drop Distance. Something like that. Because those are nonsense, for... but they're at least like... This is, I'm not going to try to understand this. It's just, it's nonsense. But this is like, I don't, I don't even, yeah. So Does anyone know how this sounds in Japanese, though? Because that's something I brought up to a couple of people, that it might sound better in Japanese. I but I don't, they, I don't I mean, know if it does, I mean, if they, it sounds any better the, or worse. I, I mean, know. when they announced the thing, they used the, they didn't use Japanese yeah. to describe. They yeah. used the, um, Oh, okay. It was still in English. And... I don't know then. <laughs> Do we know if the subtitles are translated for the Japanese releases, though? Because Japan uses, like, English quite a bit. Yeah, I don't think the subtitles are generally... I, 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 it's been a while since I looked up, but I don't think they generally are translated. They're still in English. Okay. I mean... Yeah, we could pull the whole language barrier thing and say, like, oh, well, Japanese people came up with this title and they may have an incomplete understanding of English, but this is a huge company mm -hmm. that has English-speaking resources and English-speaking people within it, and they all looked at this title and said, okay. <laughs> Sounds great. <laughs> yeah, so that's like the a, title. A, a, yeah, yeah, like, at some point, I think they're just doing it just because... They want to fuck with us. Yeah. <laughs> they know they know they can get away with this. After three five eight over two days, they're like these people will eat up anything. <laughs> <sighs> yes, what Namura hath wrought. But um, so so two point eight final chapter prologue. <laughs> I'm just calling it two point eight henceforth okay. because yes, I'm, I'm please, not. Yeah, yeah. Please. So two point eight um is the next I guess HD collection remaster coming to game consoles for the Kingdom Hearts series. Console. That was a weird way to freeze phrase that. <laughs> yeah. So it's coming out exclusively on the PlayStation 4, which we were going to talk about. It, I'm just getting the information out of the way. Um, it will include Dream Drop Distance HD, which we've been calling for months now, and that doesn't really come as a surprise. Um, we don't know exactly what the Chi coverage is going to be. It seems to me like it's going to be like a movie that yes. sort of summarizes the important points of Chi. Obviously, you still should play Chi if you want to have a complete yeah, how understanding. Have been yeah. Yeah, I think how that um, what I saw, I don't yeah, it might have been Roxanne that posted it, but it was in the article that it's not going to be plot points taken from the current Chi game. It's something else. Okay. So maybe it's added on. Yeah, so you, yeah the... still play the game, but... Yeah, from what I... The the thing that I posted up on the Fen, the Famitsu article, they it's talking about, like, yeah, there's some stuff from Chi in here, but there are other stuff that isn't from Chi in here. I'm guessing what it's going to do is, like, take the things that she kind of leaves hanging and sort of connects it to the other stuff in the that's, series. That's probably a good guess. Yeah, that's what I imagine. I mean, again, we don't know if it's going to be, like, playable in any form or a movie. It, no, they, I'm guessing, they, oh, it they, is a movie? They, yeah, they've come out okay. and said it's a movie. So. Okay, okay, so you get a Chi movie, and then you get uh, Kingdom Hearts Point 2. <laughs> a fragmentary <laughs> passage, you mit which... It's, uh, did no, I miss words? You, no, you missed Birth by Sleep, because that's still in there. <laughs> oh, yeah. so what is it? Kingdom Hearts Point 2, Birth by Sleep, a fragmentary passage? Yes, you need to oh, remember God. the dashes as yes. well. Yes, yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, okay, so a fragmentary passage is pretty much Birth by Sleep Volume 2. It is going to focus on Aqua in the Realm of Darkness. And interestingly enough, it is on the Kingdom Hearts 3 engine. So yes. it is going to be our mm. first like playable look at the Kingdom Hearts 3 engine and our first experiences with it. So it's really, really exciting in that yes. respect. Yeah. Um, there's there's so much to talk about here and I almost don't know where to begin. I guess start with just, I just start with the order that we introduce these things in. I yeah, guess. so Dream Drop Distance HD, we, we've all wanted that for a long time, and I'm happy that it's coming to the PlayStation uh, 4 because that is, of course, such an important title, and it's one that so many people did not get to play because it's on the 3DS. So, like, I don't think anybody has a problem with that. I think everybody is favorable about Square kind of uh, making good yeah. where they kind yeah. of fucked yeah. around before. Yeah, so I mean, that's, the, dream that's not a problem. Yeah, the Dream Drop <laughs> Distance things is kind of straightforward because it's like, hey, this is a game that we all expected to get an HD version of and ported to consoles, and they seem to be doing just that with that title, so... 
Mm -hmm. And I always, I want to give a shout out to uh, one of our moderators I wanted to explode. Um, Every time an HD remaster is announced and we get, like, footage or screenshots from it, he does a really nice comparison of, like, the old game footage to, like, the new screenshots. And, you know, from what he showed, it's, like, the other HD remasters where, you know, they're updating models, updating textures, and it, I, I, It'll probably yeah. be in line uh, with yeah, the just, other I mean, HD even just remasters. a regular resolution boost would do so much for that game. Yeah. Because yeah. Yeah. The, the 3DS resolution is horrendous. And it's not horrendous. on the 3DS. <laughs> yeah. So, so that, that, that's all good. We're all chill with that. I'm sure that we're all chill with the Chi movie as well, uh, because, you know, we need those connections. And it's unreasonable to expect everybody to play Chi, so having something that kind of sources that and helps with that, that's fine. It starts to get shady with the fragmentary passage thing. I I don't know, because so many people have wanted Birth by Sleep Volume 2 for so long. And, of course, I am never going to be upset with uh, <laughs> a game in which I can control Aqua, especially in the beauty and splendor of the Kingdom Engine. Or I guess it's not the Kingdom Engine anymore. The Kingdom Shader. I don't know what I'm talking about. The Kingdom Hearts 3 engine. Um, <laughs> so, like, I'm not I'm not upset about that, but there are a lot of questions as to, like, how far it will go, how long it will be, mm-hmm. what exactly it is. And, of course, we'll see those answered in time and with the actual release of the game. But it's just, it's, an, it's like, why can't you just put this into Kingdom Hearts 3? Like, does it really need to be a separate thing that, forces us to buy <laughs> Kingdom Hearts 2.8. Yeah, I feel... Because how they've been talking about it, they've been talking about how it's a prologue um, to Kingdom Hearts 3. Um, I have a feeling it's... I, I know a lot of this comparison has been made a lot, but I, it's, it reminds me very much of the Ground Zeroes and Phantom Pain situation <laughs> with um, Metal Gear Solid, where Ground Zeroes was released a year before, and it was about... I want to say about 30 to 40 minutes worth of content, or probably even less than that, depending on if you knew what you were doing or not. And that kind of set up the premise for Phantom Pain. And it also gave, I mean, not only in story-wise, but it also set up, like, how the game would play and all this other stuff about, you know, the Metal Gear Solid Five little saga of stuff. And it seems like this is something similar. Right. Which, I mean, I, I would agree with you where, like, on one hand, it's something that, probably could have been included with Kingdom Hearts 3. On the other hand, I'm kind of excited to play a bit of Kingdom Hearts 3 in 2016. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's yeah. that's kind of the conflict. Also, I feel like this... Like, I feel like this is a better thing... Well, actually, I should re- rephrase that. If they were going to just release um, Kingdom Hearts HD, the Dream Drop Distance HD, then I would expect it to be... I guess I would expect it to be cheaper, obviously, because it would just basically be that game and maybe mm. the Chi movie. Mm. And this is probably a way for Square to make it more expensive. Yeah, because current pre-orders have set it at $60. Those might just be pre-placeholder pre, uh, uh, things. But also we look at something like Type-0, which I'm pretty sure was $60. And that included Type-0 and, of course, the Final Fantasy XV demo. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, it's a weird thing because on one hand, like I can see Square just wanted to keep with the theme of like, okay, we need three things in this collection, like the previous two collections. And I rather them do, I guess, something new for that than have like, just be something like another rehash or something. But mm-hmm. I I am with you where part of me is like, I wish this was actually just part of Kingdom Hearts three itself instead of something brand new because you know with the hd remasters it, they're addressing kind of the fragmentation of the series and i use the word fragmentation completely intentionally because this fragmentary passage thing it's just it's more fragmentation it's breaking the series up just even more and it's kind of annoying to be honest as somebody who doesn't have enough money to buy every game that i want obviously this is something that i want to play but it's just like it feels it feels like to me when we learned that the Roxas tutorial was the first part of Kingdom Hearts 2. I feel like this could have been it. And like, yes, I am excited to you know get my hands on the Kingdom Hearts 3 engine and try it out. Uh, but then it starts reminding me of Final Fantasy 15 and what they did with the demo and how they, in my opinion, focused too much on fan feedback. And so I'm worried about that. I mean, from what they've been saying, this isn't a demo. This is no. like. 
it, it, it it's not a demo, but it's still demoing the engine. Yeah, I mean it's it's <laughs> it's not. I mean it's as much as a demo as Ground Zeroes was. Yeah. Um, it's like it's its own thing, and it doesn't sound like they're using it to get feedback on the game. They're using it to just. Yeah, that's put, true. They're putting. They're using it to put something out. In the meantime, I guess you can say, mm-hmm. because it does. It it seems like Square wants. It feels weird saying this, but it feels like Square wants to put something new out for this series instead of just rehashes. That's true. Mm-hmm. Um, and so there, this made, I guess, this made the most sense to them to put out. But yeah. as as yeah. you said, we also need to find out more about like how long it is, how much content is actually going to be in it, mm-hmm. how much, basically everything about it besides like its premise. So we, I, we probably will have to wait a little bit before we learn anything about that right from the sounds of what they're talking about it it is supposed to be well obviously it's a 2016 game but from what i've been hearing it's supposed to be an almost like early to mid 2006 2016 game not 2006 Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) but yeah we will probably hear more about it but more at it at d23 yeah um so yeah yeah how do the rest of this feel because me and nick kind of battle for a little bit there what about you guys um well i mean i don't mind it being on with the uh remaster because i think that um it is a i think it'll hold some people off that are a little bit anxious and it depends how game how long the game is too right like if they're gonna make it not as long as 3d but maybe a little less then it i think that it maybe should be on its own thing but if it's only like a couple hours long then maybe not but from what i've been reading people are thinking that it's gonna be like at a reasonable length like the other um uh ds games like recoded and um mm. 3d mm. and stuff like that i think it's gonna so, be that much i i have i have i i, I can't see it well, being that a little long. less no. than that but no. not i mean <laughs> i'm sorry no yeah i mean I, i'm sorry to interrupt as well but i think um Cassie's um, comparison to the Roxas prologue, I think I would think it would probably be around that length. Yeah, I think you'll be able to squeeze an, more time out of it if you really want to, but it is not to the extent of like a fully fledged mobile game. I can't, especially if the target release is early to mid 2016. They just, it's not a time, it's a timing thing. They just, they wouldn't put in that much stuff. Because, I mean, as much as like, the DS games kind of seem like bullshit. It does take time to develop those, and it would take even more time to develop this. So I just, uh, yeah, sorry to interrupt, but I don't think it's going to be anywhere near that. I don't know, though, because, like, that. from what I've been reading, like, this game has been an idea for a really long time, so... Oh, yeah. I don't know. Maybe that... If, if they get their act together, I could see it not being as long as 358 over 2 or Recoded, but at least... It, Length, lengthy enough for it to warrant it being by itself instead of with uh, at the beginning of three. But I don't know. Yeah, I mean, we're also working off the assumption that this actually is like, I mean, I mean we know we knew about Birth by Sleep Volume 2 for a while and all this other stuff, but this is th- that entire concept could have changed between whenever they decided that was a thing and now. Yeah, that's um, true. So it could just be like, hey, this is something that, because like instead of making a full game around it, maybe they just want to get the basic concepts of what that game was supposed to cover yeah. out of the way. Um, I will say the one thing the one thing that they could add that could actually make it lengthy is like having a sort of battle arena type thing in it, and not so much lengthy in the terms of like story or anything like that, but lengthy in like getting us having us being able to use and get used to the battle system. Um, that may be yes. used in Kingdom Hearts 3. So having some, just just some throwaway arena thing where they throw enemies at you and you're just battling them could be fun, actually, mm-hmm. because it, get, it, 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 gets, it gets you, like, in the mindset of how Kingdom Hearts 3 is going to play as and all that other stuff. So I'd hope for some, like, side-y, side mission-y type stuff, at least in it, to have us they just basically get us used and up to date to how the game it will play eventually when it's released yeah, yeah i'd like that too because that was always a main point of contention with me about what volume two could be because it's like aqua walks around the realm of darkness she sees a mm-hmm. dark rock she sees another dark rock 
<laughs> like what's well, in there? <laughs> we don't I know mean, enough about aside from I guess the real Kingdom Hearts, whatever that is too. There's still there's just a bunch of unknown stuff that we don't know is there. Yeah. I mean, I guess in the what was it, the Famatsu news thing that they they did mention kind of what it's gonna be about. And that was like that she came across oh gosh, I can't even find it. Yeah, uh, that she came across unknown memories and she had an encounter with someone or something. What? Yeah. What I find weird, though, because this is called a fragmentary pass or fra fragmentary passage. memory passage passage, passage. Uh, is that was I think that was the name of the secret episode in Birth by Sleep, um, where you controlled Aqua in the realm of darkness. Yeah. So it's I don't. They say it's a brand new thing, so it's weird that they're just calling it the same thing. And I just well, I don't that know. that Maybe phrase they think has people been used. Don't remember. <laughs> Not just that, but I'm pretty sure that phrase has been used before Birth by Sleep. Um, in the ending of Chain of Memories, I think it was Riku's. They said something. I have to look this up now because this is going to drive me crazy. Yeah, I just found that weird that they're calling it something that they already called something that almost seems like the same thing because the fragmentary passage thing in birth by sleep was just aqua in the realm of darkness and fighting that uh that boss and maybe it's a continuation maybe. of that then? yeah yeah it could be uh, it just it just it just to me it just seemed like a weird thing to call it when there was already something that was called that and not only that but it, like seemed like it had a similar pre premise and yeah i don't know well, for me, um, I'm thinking about like what Misty said. Um, if it did come up in um, a chain of memories, which it might have, it's like um, fuzzy in my head. But uh, in a storytelling format, that's actually kind of interesting. If you look at it in like a broader spectrum, uh, storytellers like to use rule of threes a lot, like anywhere when they're telling a story. And if you're looking at it in the grand scheme of things, it was mentioned twice already. So doing it a third time. This third time must be really important, so this might be the bigger impact of it. Ooh, I like that. <laughs> yeah, I just I, as I said, I, I I'm just curious about the naming of. It's basically like if you're gonna look at the Kingdom Hearts series in chapters, it'd be looking at like chapter nine, a fragmentary passage, then chapter ten, a fragmentary passage. It just seems weird to me. I'm sorry, I'm looking up the chain of no, memories. No, no, thing no, I no worries, no worries. <laughs> I really feel like I remember that because there, it was only in the GBA version. Um, Are you sure that's and... not in two? Because I can remember something Maybe. that kind of sounded like that in the Cavern in the... of Remembrance. Are, but... are you sure it wasn't from the Birth by Sleep secret? End? I mean, the this Kingdom Hearts two secret ending Birth by Sleep thing. It's possible. Yeah, I found the poem that flashes on the screen after um, Chain of Memories, and it doesn't have the phrase of fragmentary passage. So maybe I was just remembering it incorrectly, but. Um... Yeah, there were poems at the end of Chain of Memories. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I remember that much. There's, po yeah. there's like the poems at the end of everything, yeah. it seems like. Maybe it did flash on the screen during the Chasers ending of Kingdom Hearts 2. Yeah. It's, That's a possibility. It, I, it's been a while since I've seen those secret yeah, endings. Yeah, I remember so. that one really well because that was kind of when I first got really into the Kingdom Hearts fandom and that was what we were all looking at at the time. But yeah, so I mean, there, there are a lot of conflicted feelings with the fragmentary passage thing and I think that a lot of them will be alleviated once we learn just how long... The game will be. I don't see it being anything substantial, more than maybe a few hours, if that. Um, but uh, again, we'll see. Um, this, just like we're kind of conflicted here, this did divide a lot of Kingdom Hearts fans. The announcement of not just the fragmentary passage thing, but the um, entire 2.8 thing. Because I think it kind of dug up some old feelings about like Square milking the series and just like how long we've had to wait. Uh, for new games, but I, I do have to, I, the reason I bring it up is that I do want to say for everyone, this is not going to affect the development of Kingdom Hearts 3 in the slightest. It's not, to, it's not delaying Kingdom Hearts 3, and like, I understand. My heart goes out to the people that have been waiting for Kingdom Hearts 3, because I am one of them. I understand how frustrated you are, but like, maybe just simmer down a little and wait like i know i know it's very hard to wait but like th there's nothing that we can do and getting all angry about it is not going to help anything and like there are other games that you can be playing <laughs> yeah like i know i know that's been a common thing but like 2.8 coming out next year has no effect on i mean if 2.8 wasn't wasn't coming out next year then we just wouldn't get a kingdom hearts game next year exactly um so so like if it's not affecting kingdom hearts 3 it's just it's more kingdom hearts for you like 
I, I feel it? like they wouldn't have done it. Like, they wouldn't be doing it if it delayed Kingdom Hearts 3 anymore. Yeah, that's not necessarily like, they true. Know. <laughs> I mean, I, I think that if they're, if they're planning it to release so early, then they already got their act together and have done at something, mm. at least. Can, can so, I, I don't know. Can can I just say though, um, outside of the you know original trio of Sora, Donald, and Goofy, that Aqua is the next one to be shown in the Kingdom Hearts Three engine? Yeah, and how as it should be. As was, it should be. Man, when that because I was watching this live um, when it was going on, it was like it was like twelve thirty at night over here, um, <laughs> and I saw that I was like. I, I, I wasn't sure what that was at first because I, I mean obviously it was Aqua in looking really great um, but I wasn't entirely sure and I got I was getting really excited about what that could be and then it, I mean obviously like a few minutes later when they're saying the things that were in this collection it got me excited it got me at, in the moment it got me really excited because it was our first look at Aqua in mm -hmm. um what she would look like in Kingdom Hearts 3. If only but... they spun the camera around. A I know, bit. I know. I, I mean, I know why. She was looking at thing, something, but, and yeah. that's what bothers me about so, it. Is that just, I want to look head. at her. <laughs> they, they just didn't render her face yet, so they just needed the back of her head. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'd like to think that they actually know what, like, called out to her that's behind her or whatever. Because, I mean, they do say that she encounters something. And I, um, I don't remember how many days after this happened. But I basically, that, I think the first couple nights, I just went to ham with the theor theorizing. <laughs> and that's in the general Kingdom Hearts section if anybody wants to respond to that. <laughs> I feel like we really should add, like, a regular part of the podcast where Cal just, like, updates her on us on our theories that are floating around. We, we'll talk. Um, <laughs> but no, I think it was the face thing, probably. They heard my complaints about Sora's gloves in the Kingdom Hearts 3 trailers, and they're just like, we're not going to fuck around and show something unfinished. We're we're just going to show the back of Aqua, and that's what it was. I hate those gloves. I'm still, I'm still just which, thinking um, about but, the gloves. Which, um, I mean, this doesn't really have anything to do with the collection, but they did in that the trailer when they finally put it up for official, I guess, consumption besides outside mm -hmm. of the little conference that they had it did include some new kingdom hearts 3 footage i still haven't watched um, it <laughs> yeah it's i mean I it's feel not like much. it's been it was, so overshadowed <laughs> yeah it's i mean it's it's really not much it's just more gameplay mm -hmm. um, yeah it's basically look? like sparkly attacks that sora's doing yeah, they showed I mean, <laughs> they, they showed it, more gameplay from olympus coliseum with sora attacking the rock titan um they, they showed love more. that rock titan fight they're really proud of it <laughs> yeah um, but yeah they basically just showed off some new gameplay and some new moves from sora and sometimes using moves that he used in one area and they're showing it off in another area now okay yeah so it's, it's not anything substantial but it was like when i when I uploaded and I made a post about that trailer, uh, I I saw the beginning part was just Kingdom Hearts stuff, and Kingdom Hearts three stuff. I'm like, okay, where's the? So it's probably just the E three trailer again because it looked like the E three trailer. Mm -hmm. And then somebody like, hey, that looks like there's some new footage in here. I'm like, oh really? Okay. Um, I didn't really notice, but something okay. I did notice about the um, the attacks that he was using though was that there was fire on the ground from like whoever Donald or Sora is shooting it, and it actually like stayed on the ground and burned for a little while. And I'm like, that's what I'm talking about, Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> like, after that's my what I like heart, to man. see. Exactly. I would commit so much arson in that game. <laughs> I know, that exactly. Was it. Like that's what I was thinking. I was like, hey, you know the Rapunzel area? That's kind of all grass. I wonder. <laughs> I wonder. Uh, but yeah, that's just me my like arsonistic <laughs> tendencies arsenic yeah <laughs> uh. yeah i'm gonna have to parse through that uh short footage and look at the gloves and see if they're as, still as offensive they uh, probably are yeah they probably are i hate those gloves um moving on to talking about the platform for this uh obviously one thing is that it's not coming to the xbox one which we've kind of been weird about the xbox version of kingdom Hearts 3 on this podcast in that we were saying that... I don't know that why it even exists anymore. We don't know why it <laughs> yeah. exists, and we've been saying that, like, if Final Fantasy XV does poorly on the Xbox One, we could very much see them just being like, what Kingdom Hearts 3 on the Xbox Yeah, One? I mean, and at this like point, not... actually, because considering that um, Final Fantasy XV is supposed to come out next year, um, <laughs> at least that's what they're saying, um, <laughs> if it does come out next year, then that's not a lot of time in between, you know, it's released in Kingdom Hearts 3's release. I feel like so I'm they... broken from Final Fantasy 15. Like I'm I'm like so done with this fucking <laughs> game. <laughs> I will on, say though, um last night they had an ATR and it was like I don't care. It, 
I know, but it was I read actually... all about it. I don't care. <laughs> I read these things good. and I'm just like, I don't fucking <laughs> care. <laughs> the last ATR was actually pretty good. No, it wasn't. Um, yeah, it was. No, it compared, wasn't. <laughs> compared to the last ones, yeah, it was. Yeah, okay. Um, anyway, though, Kingdom Hearts 3. Um... It's like some crackers on the top of diarrhea soup. It's just... It's... <laughs> <laughs> Kingdom Hearts 3, there's just so little time between... 15's release and 3's release that it wouldn't probably make a difference. Yeah, yeah. Um, because it's so much work would be done, but yeah, like... but it just, it, it, this not being on the Xbox One uh, 2.8 just was even more of like, we don't give a f*** about the Xbox yeah, One. I'm like, cursing I, a lot this episode, I'm sorry. Yeah, I, no, no, I... <laughs> like, I, I have the feeling that if Kingdom Hearts 3 was announced at like, this E3, um, it would be only on the PS4 at this point because... That just seems the yeah. only platform Square is really announcing things for. Um, speaking, of course, of the J- Japanese branch, not the Western branch, which, mm-hmm. of course, that would be everywhere. But, yeah, it's, 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 it's really weird looking at Square's list of games that are coming out, and about all of them are on the PS4, and none of them are on the Xbox One. <laughs> but that's kind of funny, because if you remember, I remember... I think it was at the beginning when Kingdom Hearts 3 was first announced. I think that was still, like, the beginning of, like, this new generation with the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One. But today, um, I thought I saw a report, and Nick can um, correct me if I'm wrong. In Japan, at least, the Xbox One is the least selling game console. Like, not even selling, like, millions there. Yeah, yeah. Last week, it sold 80 units. (laughs) To an entire country. (laughs) Um, There's a few times when they've gotten... They've gotten lower sometimes. A lot of the time, they hover around the 100 to 200 unit mark. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, they it's 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 just not a viable console. It in is that a non presence in in Japan, and that's right. entirely yeah. what we expected. So it's just even more baffling that Kingdom Hearts is. Uh, I mean, obviously, the, the King like if you notice Square's announcements, the Kingdom Hearts three, the Final Fantasy fifteen, and the Type Zero announcement. I mean. They were all made before... I mean, Type-0 was made after the console's launch, but still pretty early in the life cycle of this generation. Mm -hmm. So all three of those were made before kind of how this generation turned out. So, like, it makes sense that, like, okay, they see all this stuff and, like, okay, we we know we're not going to produce anything else on this platform so but they're still committed to those three times yeah, I mean, they they done it work, yeah they've 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 announced it they've done work on it so at this point not scrapping releasing it, it yeah would be yeah. a bad choice yeah scrapping it would not only be a bad pr move but it would, they'd probably just be wasting money um yeah. i can't i can't imagine that um the amount to just finish production and do the entire disc press and shipping and all that other stuff would cost an exorbitant exorbitant amount of money compared to just the PR hit they would take from canceling versions. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, the other note that I want to talk about is that um, when we did the episode on 2.9, the 2.9 that we don't know if it is a thing at all, and I'm going to get to that also, but um, it was listed on Richard Van De Vitt, whatever's um, LinkedIn profile as PS3 and PS4, which I find interesting. Um, I don't know if maybe that was just a mistake that he made. I don't know what to make of it. I kind of did have a little bit of hope that the Dream Drop Distance HD remaster would maybe come out for the PlayStation 3. They would just, like, quietly announce that, but that didn't happen. So, I don't know. I, I just thought I'd bring that up yeah, um, I'm, as a weird yeah, thing. Yeah, I'm curious about that. If, like, maybe it, at one point it was planned, um, and then for whatever reason that they... The, the I thing mean, the with simple that, reason is that, like... If they're using the Kingdom Hearts 3 engine, there's no reason to, yeah, like, yeah. make it work on the PlayStation 3. That would just be too much. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, yeah, that that would be... That's kind of the obvious reason why it's yeah. on the PS3. But it is the still PS4. an interesting... Maybe at some point it was sort of planned to be this thing. Like a cross-generational yeah. thing. Yeah. yeah. I don't I mean, know. I just yeah. I found it interesting. Yeah, um, it, it's a weird little thing. And I, I also wonder if 2.9 might be a thing, if that's still a title that's being thrown out. Like, if maybe we will see all of the HD remasters make it to the PlayStation 4 as 2.9. I don't know. I just thought I'd throw it out there. I'm just thinking on those two things. Uh, another thing about the platform, and this is kind of the last thing I wanted to bring up, but obviously you guys can introduce things into the mix, um, is... This will be the first of the HD remasters and of any Kingdom Hearts game to be on the PlayStation 4. And that's not just exciting because, yay, I have a PlayStation 4 and you guys can start saving your pennies for it. But 
One of the big problems with bringing the HD remasters to the PlayStation 4 in the past has been the issue of Utada's music. Uh, Utada's original agreement with Square did not include uh, digital dis- distribution of the titles, and that wasn't a problem with like the PlayStation 2 or anything, and that's why the previous HD remasters are not available on the PlayStation Store, uh, because they would have to work out a new deal with Utada. So... Uh, With the PlayStation 4, any game that comes out on it is required to be digital as well. So um, not only does that mean that this, that 2.8 will be digitally available, but I'm guessing that they maybe worked out something new with Utada or found some loophole in the contract. I don't know because Dream Drop Distance, of course, uses, it was simple and clean for the opening, right? It was simple and clean. I believe so. For the ending, I think. Okay, so they they use both of Utada's songs, so they do have to have some kind of new agreement. Unless they're taking them out. I mean, I wouldn't see them doing that, but they could do that. They could, but I don't (laughs) see them doing that. I mean, that would hurt me. It's just a thought. Um, Well, I mean, they do need new music for Kingdom Hearts three, so either they went back to her and got something done, or maybe they'll get something done for three D. That's. My hope Different, was... if anything. I mean, I hope that they're using the same music, but I don't know. Mm-hmm. My well, hope was this... that, like, looking at, um... Utada released a, like, anniversary album recently, and Nomura did the, uh, artwork for it. And, um, that had a lot of people saying, like, yes, Nomura and Utada back together again! And so, like, this <laughs> is, like, reawakening that in me. But go on, Summer. Or, I was gonna say, like, this might just be a dumb question, but, um... I, if I remember correctly, Kingdom Hearts 3, the opening was just uh, like the big orchestration version of, uh, or Kingdom Hearts 3D, the big orchestration of uh, Simple and Clean. Does mm-hmm. that make a difference? Like, is yes, it since it it's would. A... Okay, yeah. So I believe I remember it is just the orchestration, not her is it? actual okay. song. Yeah, I don't think yeah. her voice was in there now that I'm thinking about it, because it had Mickey like conducting all of the stuff underneath. Yeah. Okay. But I mean, there's still there's still digital problems with that game because it's not available on the 3DS store. I think that it would affect, like, maybe that is the loophole in the contract that it does not affect the orchestral versions of those Of course, this songs. is also, I know this. not everybody is aware of this, but... Being digital on the PS4 isn't a requirement. Oh, I thought it was. I thought it was too, until a few games came out in Japan where they are not available for download. Really? They're retail okay. only. So that so, throws all of this out the window. Yeah, <laughs> because um, um, one of the titles actually was is um, called um, Puyo Puyo Tetris. Um, right, nice. Which I, I saw it, I'm like, I want to play this. And so I was thinking about just making a Japanese account and just downloading it. Um, turns out that it is not available on the PlayStation Japanese store or on the Xbox digital store or anywhere digitally. Um, it is strictly a retail release in Japan. Okay, interesting. Very, I, That could very well be the case, though I'm sure Sony and... Well, I guess in just this case with um, 2.8 it would just be Sony. I'm sure Sony would still want... Because this is a game that's coming out in, you know, worldwide and all that other stuff. So I'm sure Sony wants to push like, hey, we get this digital, get this to be a digital release because that's kind of our, that's kind of the thing our, our customers are expecting from buying a PlayStation 4 game. Um, but there has been apparently been made exceptions to that rule, I guess. But yeah, like it is, it, 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 it I, I, I'll be interested to see if it actually does get a digital release because I, my gut feeling says yes, it will. Just yeah. because it 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 that it would be weird because if if it didn't, then that would be the first I think Western game that didn't get a digital release. Um, so, yeah, I'm curious about how that that <clears throat> excuse me um, that pl- that pans out. Yeah, and kind of the final question that I wanted to ask to wrap this up. If you guys have more to bring up, you absolutely can. But uh, it's just the easy: Are you going to buy it? <laughs> like, how do you feel? Are you going to purchase this game? Yeah. <laughs> Nick, I you guess. sound so like sad. <laughs> like, yes. <laughs> I mean, part of me. I mean, part of me because I haven't played Dream Drop Distance, so I, I'd like to at least have you know play that. Um, mm-hmm. The other part is like I, I do want to play the the Birth by Sleep thing that they're putting out as well. Um, the thing the thing that makes me sad is that I'm. The entire the sixty. I hope that sixty dollars is just a placeholder because that's yeah, just that's a lot. That's yeah. ridiculous mm. for what they're asking. Um, but yeah, like I, I'll probably buy it. Yes, um, and I'll, 
you know what i'll probably buy it and i'll probably enjoy it as well <laughs> but like i i you're gonna resent buying it <laughs> yeah it's just it's just weird like i the the worst part about it is that 2016 is packed with so many things yeah there's just so much coming out in 2016 and obviously some of that could get delayed into 2017 but it's just there's so much coming out next yeah, year that's a drop that sixty dollars on a game that's like already kind of out yeah it's it's, yeah. it's 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 tough yeah <laughs> I'm probably gonna buy it I need to get a PS4 first but this I never owned Dream Drop Distance I had to steal it from my baby brother to play it oh wow. <laughs> <laughs> it was fine but yeah i would buy it to own it and it'd also give me time to wait for the other stuff that's coming out next year like persona 5 and maybe mass effect andromeda which i'm hoping gets pushed back to 2017 and mirror's edge how are you forgetting and mirror's about edge mirror's Catalyst. edge and two <laughs> gravity rush releases and gravity rush and God, I'm so excited. whatever project setsuna is gonna be uh, there's just so much coming out next year it's it's it, it makes it, it like if 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 like if that collection came out this year um i would like i'd be okay I'd yeah, because the only thing for... really left coming out this year is Battlefront. Yeah, I so. mean, because like even this year overall, like my purchases would have been Bloodborne and Metal Gear Solid Five and a few other odds and ends here and there, but nothing like a tentpole release. Um, and but nope, coming out next year where like Horizon is coming out ah! and so excited <laughs> The Last for that Guardian game. is supposed <laughs> to be coming out and like Final Fantasy Fifteen, <laughs> Final Fantasy Fifteen, Uncharted Four, Street Fighter Five. Um, there's just a whole bunch of stuff coming out next year that it makes it difficult to like drop sixty dollars on a Another remaster collection. Game. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Cal and Summer. <laughs> um, I'll probably get a PS4 around the time I graduate, and that game will probably be like at least zero by then. So it'll be cheaper to buy. And plus, by that time, Kingdom Hearts 3 may be released. I have no idea. But it'll at least be something that I can at least say, oh, I, it's worth buying a PS4 for, or I'm not just going to have something like collecting dust while I wait for the one game I'm really buying the PS4 okay, to do. Okay, there are other things to use your PS4 for. <laughs> well, yeah, it's just, I'm, I'm, I don't know that much about gaming. Like, Kingdom yeah. Hearts okay. is really the only game that I follow. Okay. Like, uh, Horizon, that looked interesting to me, although it looks like, it was it's sort of like um, taking some things from a um, light novel series called Log Horizon. And, of course, there's the uh, Attack on Titan video game that looks Woo! interesting. That actually, they actually finally showed gameplay off for it that. It looks that, really that, nice, honestly. That actually looked, yeah. yeah, I was surprised. Like, yeah. Koei Tecmo is, like, on, <laughs> on fire with their releases, which is, I would never think I would say that. <laughs> um, but, yeah, they, they really brought a whole bunch of interesting stuff. But, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, if Kingdom Hearts is, like, the series you follow, then... Yeah, like, that makes sense. Yeah. It's nice to have another PS4 game. Yeah. Cal? Oh, I'm totally gonna get it. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm so surprised. <laughs> I mean, I'm not... I, I wouldn't say that you guys are picky, but, like, I'm not... No, I it's, am. It's a Kingdom Hearts game. That's all I care about. I don't care what it is. I, guess... I don't care, like, how uh, badly recepted... You know, I, there's a lot of stuff going on with... Oh, geez, my microphone cut out. Oh, there's a lot of stuff with the 2.8, and a lot of people aren't liking it or whatever, and I'm just here like, you know what? It's good enough for me. Yeah, I guess Nomura that... could keep I guess releasing, like... I buying a new console for every game, so I'm just like, yeah, I mean, why not? Yeah, I guess, I guess, I guess that's part of the thing is that I play a lot of games, so there are a lot of options for me where I could spend my money. Mm -hmm. So it's always this question of like, oh, I could buy it now, uh, but there's like six other things that I could buy as well. <laughs> I'm like Tummer. I don't really, um, I mean, I have a lot of, I follow games, but I don't always play all of them. And usually when, I mean, I'm still kind of at the stage where if I ask my mom for something, she will buy it for me and I don't have to worry about my own money. <laughs> so it's that, not that, as that is nice. Problem. I don't yeah. have to worry about my own money because I don't have any. <laughs> uh, yeah, same here. And that was that would be nice if I can just, hey, can I have this? Right? I can't imagine the last oh time like I went into the store. Oh, that's such a throwback, though. Like, going to Best Buy with my mom. Yeah. Like, can you buy this for me? Oh, man. Yeah, but, um... As for me, 
I'm just, I'm tired. I'm tired of the Kingdom Hearts series, and I feel like <laughs> saying that as the host of yes. the KHVids <laughs> podcast. I'm so weary of the series. I feel like my interest is waning a little bit, and I don't I, I don't see that as, like, an absolute thing. I'm sure it'll pick back up again with Kingdom Hearts 3, but this is just, like, more noise in the background for me. It's just there. And, like, as excited as I am about playing as Aqua and everything, I don't think I'm going to buy this. Uh, at least not close to when it releases. Because, I mean, like Nick, I do play a lot of other things, and, I mean, lately I've barely had time to play anything. So, if I'm looking at, like, play this new game that just came out, or play, like, this recycled old... I would probably choose the new game. I just, I feel so crappy admitting that, but, like, I am I am tired, so I do have more sympathy for all the people that are that have negative feelings about 2.8. Uh, it was um, somebody that used to be pretty active on KHV. She doesn't really go on here anymore. Um, I think her username right now is Heckboy on KHV. I don't know, Reptar. She changes it a lot. But uh, I follow her on Tumblr, and one of her posts was just like, I can't wait for Kingdom Hearts 3 to come out so I can stop buying these games and stop following the Kingdom Hearts series. And I don't I don't think that that is um, what I'll do, necessarily. I don't see myself, like, abandoning the series after Kingdom Hearts 3, but it's just, it's so... I'm, I'm tired. I'm weary yeah. of the I mean, Kingdom so Hearts series. I mean, so would you would, would you have preferred if nothing was coming out this year? No, or because next I'm year, happy for all the people that are excited no, I'm, for I, this I, game. No, I'm not talking about what <laughs> other people feel. I'm talking about how you feel. <laughs> Honestly, yeah. I, I would be absolutely fine if Dream Drop Distance was never remastered because, like, I haven't played it, but I also don't feel a particular inclination to. I do think I will play Chi just because, like, mobile games, now that I'm back in school, a mobile game seems more conducive to my life. And I finished Flow, so, like, I need something <laughs> to do. <laughs> um, uh, so, like, I don't need the Chi movie. And then, like, the Aqua thing, like I said, I would be absolutely fine with it just being part of Kingdom Hearts 3. Because Kingdom Hearts 3 is the one that I would, like, absolutely buy. I owe it to myself to buy and play Kingdom Hearts 3. But What if it was never included in Kingdom Hearts 3, though? Like, if, if it if, just if didn't it, exist if, at all? Yeah. I would be fine with that. Okay. Yeah. Because, I, I mean, mean, I love Aqua. I love Birth by Sleep. Birth by Sleep is, like, the one part of Kingdom Hearts 3 that still gets me... Of uh, Kingdom Hearts that still gets me pumped and, like, riled up. But I don't need Aqua walking through the Realm of Darkness for two hours for $60. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, no, no. Yeah. I mean, I'm curious. It, it's weird. It's weird because of how, I mean, how different, like, games are um today yeah today compared to back then because like this is just theoretical but like if you had a digital version you could like split halvesies with somebody that would be so nice you can have it on your console and somebody else's console or even with playstation 4 because of the share play stuff you can just like like yeah you, you can just like hey if you want to play this for now i can just leave my ps4 on and then you can just do whatever you want to do with it i mean i guess that's the other thing like i guess if i had somebody like in real life that was really into kingdom hearts I could say, like, yeah, let's buy this and we'll both play it. But, like, part of it is just that uh, I don't really know anybody that's super into Kingdom Hearts. And, like, I play video games with my boyfriend and he asked, like, do you want me to play all the Kingdom Hearts games? Like, is it worth it? And I just, like, sat there for a minute. I'm like, no. <laughs> and I know, I know, I feel so bad, like, admitting that. But, like, there are so many other games that I guess I like more and... I, I feel like I, I don't I don't mean to be so negative about the Kingdom Hearts series. It's just this is how I feel right it's, now. I mean, King, the Kingdom Hearts series isn't even my favorite series of video games. It's special to me. And, like, <laughs> like, of course, I feel like it's just part of my life because I spent the last 10, 11 <laughs> years of my life playing it and caring about it. So, like, it's always kind of there for me. But there are so many things that I'm more interested in that I like more and that I have a healthier relationship with. <laughs> <laughs> that like it's just it's... yeah yeah like no Plus, no like, Star I, I... Wars is pretty important to me so yeah like I like I, I understand where you're coming from I made this I made this post in one of the announcement threads but I just feel Square has mishandled this series so badly they have um, yeah. that like imagine where we'd be right now if Birth by Sleep and Dream Drop Distance were planned for the PS3 and Xbox 360 yeah and so we'd have King it Hearts would feel 1 and 2. less bad I would feel less horrible like the series was being because, built because they would because, feel like more substantial titles yeah because you'd have Kingdom Hearts 1 and 2 on the PS2 and I guess Reach and Memories um, if you want to count that and then you'd have Dream Drop Distance and Birth by Sleep on the PS3 
and then that's two that's two games for that console and then we'd be right now waiting for the next game on ps4 that would have given me a reason to buy a playstation 3 because i didn't get a playstation 3 until 2011 which i mean i guess that sounds like in the past now that it's 2015 but consider that the playstation 4 came out two years later and that the PlayStation 3 came out in 2006, like, that's late to get into the PlayStation 3. But I just, I didn't have a reason to, because I didn't care about any Kingdom Hearts game. That was back when I was, like, really into Kingdom Hearts still. And I just, I did, there was nothing for me. Yeah, <laughs> I, I just feel like how they've just handled that series. Like, it, it'd be in such a different mainstream mind share right now. If yeah. they had those two games on consoles... Then... Yeah, that's the other thing. Like, I do know people in my life that uh, like Kingdom Hearts and, like, I guess are casual fans of it. And so, like, when something like this is announced, they're like, oh, what's the deal with, like, this new Kingdom Hearts game? Or, or like, I'll mention it to them, like, oh, there's a new HD remaster coming out if they're, like, looking to buy a game. And they're just like, what? But, like, what is that exactly? Like, what's going on with the series? And, like, to an extent, that's their own fault because the mobile games are important and you do need to pay attention to them. But it's hard to be a fan of the Kingdom Hearts series without being, like, a super fan. Like, you mention Kingdom Hearts and they're like, oh, yeah, I played Kingdom Hearts 1, I played Kingdom Hearts 2, whatever. But it's just, it's really... It's hard to keep up with the series. Yeah, especially since before the HD remasters, you'd need to buy a PSP, a DS, and a 3DS in order to be caught up yeah. on it all, and that's so much money. Yeah, and then like by the time the HD remasters come out, I do agree that that is Square kind of making good and you know correcting past mistakes, but it's such a animal, I guess now that it's hard to tackle that. Like, it's hard but to see. I say... feel like now... Oh, sorry. Uh... Just, it's hard to say, like, okay, you have to play these two HD remasters now to get caught up with the series, and that's, like, six games. But go on, Cal. <laughs> oh, I was gonna say, like, I feel like if if Kingdom Hearts 3 is the last installment in the Xehanort saga or whatever, I mean, obviously the past games will still have an impact on whatever they decide to do after that, if mm -hmm. it's anything. I mean, I'm thinking that hopefully there is, because there's a lot of potential there, but I feel like that something like this for the next generation of Kingdom Hearts fans, they won't have to go through what we went through with That's the true. consoles, because Square knows yeah. now. Yeah. They know. So I feel like if anybody wants to get into the series and the games don't necessarily... I mean, obviously you might need to know a bit, a bit about the history to get into Kingdom Hearts 4 or whatever, mm. but I feel like you can, you know, read that or do whatever you need to, but... I don't know. I think they'll, they'll make it more accessible now yes. from now on. Yes, which absolutely. Which I think that's going to be better for, yeah. I mean, new people to get into it. Um, even if they kind of, uh, not skim over, but just take the important stuff from those other, like, get it into their system and then just go on the new one. Or maybe they won't even need that information to play whatever is after Kingdom Hearts 3. It might be good to have it, but they won't be lost right. without it. I feel like Square will make, they'll make good. And hopefully that'll help even the older Kingdom Hearts fans like you, Misty, that are a little bit like... Tired. Salty. Let it end. Salty, yes. <laughs> you know? yeah, yeah, exactly. So, yeah. I mean, I'm... There's hope for the future, I feel. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm really excited for a new direction for the series. Like, I'm excited to see all that has been building up over 11 years finally come to a close. Um, but... Uh, 11 years not that's not how old these series is but that's how long i've been kind of involved with it um and so i'm excited to see all of that concluded but i think i'm more excited to see where the series goes after that because if it's a new direction that i really like i can say like yes i'm finally excited for something kingdom hearts again and i get to kind of reawaken that love that i had for the series and if it's something really bad it's just kind of like all right kingdom hearts is kind of past in my life this is so morbid. I'm sorry to end the podcast on this note, but uh, I don't have anything else to bring up um, about 2.8 unless you guys want to enter something into the mix. Well, no. it's not 2.8 generally, but I think if I remember correctly, this past week um, marked the 13th anniversary of Kingdom yes. Hearts premiering in uh, US mm -hmm. or in North America. Yeah, the 17th of uh, September, I think. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yay! For Kingdom Hearts yeah. for being yeah. around oh, for so yeah. long. Hopefully we're able to turn this around uh, <laughs> user-submitted question. Yes, I don't know. I mean, that was my plan. 
<laughs> yeah. Uh, for me though, I mean, you guys, you guys know I'm in the I'm in the theorizing thing. So please respond to my thread. <laughs> uh, <laughs> like such a plug, but I'm just like I want to talk about this with someone else because like I already bitched about this theory to Al, and he's just like, that's nice, dear, because he doesn't know. <laughs> and um, Misty said earlier that she didn't get her boyfriend to play Kingdom Hearts, but I'm just like, yeah, Misty, you. Do- do that while I'm over here like bugging Al and like just nudging him every once like that's the first that's my first plan to get him to actually sit down and play a game and hopefully like it or he can lie and say that he does but either way I mean I just I need an outlet man and I wanted to start actually recording or yeah recording these things and um you know I would love that if we had like a video series of like Cal's and I was actually gonna ask <laughs> please do that if I can put that at the front like yes. if I can be like hey guys it's Kalaxon from KHV yes then, like I didn't know if I should be yes <laughs> uh, advertising in the- but, but yeah just just look for me because I want to I want to hear theories man I'm sorry Kel you didn't know if we would approve of a video series about Kingdom Hearts <laughs> on khviz.net <laughs> Well, I, 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 I don't know if I should be like saying that this is you know sponsored by K to be here. Yes, you know what it's not. But yeah, I mean, I will get started. I will get started on that once I'm not like dyingly sick. So yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, Here's so, hope, guys. Don't worry. Yeah, so that's King Hearts 2.8. Please let us know your feelings about it. Um, I know that everybody has feelings about King Hearts 2.8, and this 2.8 thread was, like, the longest thread that we've had in a while after its release, just because so many people were, like, split on the feeling. So we, of course, want to know what our listeners think. If you're more in the Cal camp of I'll play anything that Nomura puts out, or in the me camp of I'm so tired and poor. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we will move along to user submitted questions. To submit a question to the KHVIS podcast, all you have to do is fill out the front link to every episode of the podcast, or send an email to podcast at khvis.net. The questions can be directed to the host in particular, or the group in general. So the first question comes from Kingdom Hearts 530, who was our guest on last week's episode, and she asks, what is your favorite color hmm Hmm. gray dark gray charcoal (laughs) not blue um no um the office that's a quote from it but uh yeah blue is my favorite color i i in my old room i used to have a blue room um my room is blue it's like pale blue Mine was more of a darker blue. You should never uh, paint your bedroom dark colors. I'm it sorry, people. Uh, it's not. It, Don't I, do I'm that. saying dark and compared to pale. I like, watch it wasn't... a lot of HGTV, so I'm an authority on this. Don't go with very <laughs> dark or very saturated. Colors. I didn't say this was dark. I said it was darker than pale. Okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm. I I like blue as well. I, I I have. I also kind of really like red, but I can't really paint things red. Yeah. Um, Don't do but... that. <laughs> yeah, but my I, dining I, room used to be red, and that was horrific. But yeah, I I blue and red. Most I've been I've been like really on a red thing lately, though. I've been using a lot of red and stuff. Yeah, I'm kind of in the red camp as well. Team orange over here. <laughs> That's interesting, Alex, because like we we talked about that in media arts from what I remember of it last year, and a lot of people don't like orange. <laughs> Yeah, orange because is probably like I think yellow is probably the yellow color is, that people like yeah. the least, but orange is yellow just like is a awful. step above that. Mm-hmm. Well, because people suck and they don't have any taste in colors. Yellow and orange are the two colors that I don't really wear. So you should start. I I go with a don't. lot of the like dark <laughs> like navy and black and that kind of I yeah. I was a teenager during like the whole emo thing, so that never really like <laughs> ended. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a lot of my clothes are also pretty dark. I think I only have one orange thing, so I'm kind of a hypocrite, but I would wear orange. I don't I like love nice red, orange. but a lot of plaid is red, and I love plaid. Like, if there is anything I'm passionate about in this world, it's plaid. So, that I wear a lot of red by that token. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, so that was a very engaging and in-depth question. <laughs> um, the next question comes from Nobody's Light, and they ask, to all members of the podcast, which is superior, Apple, Android, or Windows? Uh, I'm going to guess that he's referring to uh, the Windows Phones. phone operating yeah. system, so we can immediately drop that from the running. <laughs> <laughs> it's really bad, because I've made apps for the Windows phone, um, and like I made apps for it when I didn't have a Windows phone, which... That was kind of a weird thing, but uh, I, I'm partial to Android just because I um, I don't like a lot of things about Apple's phones. Um, not so much like in terms of design, but you can't have an SD card, 
And that is the most bad thing to me because it's 2015 and like 16 gigabytes does not cut it. 32 gigabytes doesn't cut it for some people. And to be incapable of expanding that memory without buying a new phone is crazy to me. So like, I oh, like- I was so mad uh, yeah. when I got my iPhone. Cause I had an Android, right? And the Android was being, but whatever. I decided, okay, I need to get an iPhone. Cause apparently my Android, like Android's just bad. That was my line of thinking. But then I was just like, okay, so where do I insert my SD card? And they were just like, the iPhone doesn't have an SD card. And I was just like, okay, well, yeah. <laughs> I'm <laughs> so bad because I need to, like, I have a certain amount of music that I just need on my phone. Yeah. And I've been, it's like, and then when I want to download new app, like I'm doing this thing where I get paid to download stuff, whatever, but I had to delete my music, put it back on after I delete that. App. It's just, it's bad. That's and torture. even with videos, like sometimes I'll have musicals downloaded on my phone and then I have to delete everything and then just later put everything back. Cause I'm just like, what? What? Why? Yeah. Th that's actually happened to me too. Cause I have an iPhone and. What was I? I think I got like the Death Note musical, the Japanese version. <laughs> yeah. I got all the audio onto there. And then like first, um, you have to plug it in. And if you try to put the music on there, it says, oh, iCloud music is on. So it's keeping you from doing that. So you have to unplug it, um, turn that off, plug it back in, drag it in. And then it goes, would you like to have iCloud music back on? Which like if you don't know, it's like Apple's kind of service for that's sort of like Spotify where you can get a lot of music. And a lot of my new music is um, downloaded through that. So I activate it and it deletes the majority of the songs that I put on there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, more of my problem is I don't have data on my phone. I can't use data. And the where I mean, it wouldn't be that much of a problem if I could, because you can just look up basically any soundtrack on YouTube now and they will have it. And if mm -hmm. they don't, that's when you use like your music stuff, whatever. But it's just... I, I feel like that's how they're, I don't know, maybe it's just that's how they're trying to get people to pay more money. <laughs> it's not like, I mean, obviously, I don't know if they make money from, like, people's, like, phone plans or whatever, like a certain percent or what, but I, I don't know. It's just, it's, I feel like that's a ploy for people to get uh, data plans, whether it's the phone companies or just... Apple makes their money from convincing you that you need a new iPhone every year. And one of the ways that they do that is the limited storage options. Um, so that, like, when you're running out of space on your phone, then you're like, I need a new iPhone with more storage. And that's part of a problem. I mean, one of the... Diff Android was behind iOS for a few years. I think they're about equal at this point. I think Android is better because you can customize it more and there's more apps available and stuff. But um, one thing I didn't like... I originally did have an iPhone and one thing I didn't like about Android was that I didn't really like the phone selections. I didn't feel like aesthetically they were really up to par with Apple. Um, but I have an Xperia right oh, now and so it's jealous. beautiful. I love it. It's I'm so jealous. so pretty. I still have not tried remote play on it, but it is it is beautiful. I had to put it in a case because like I don't want anything to happen to it and like it's a bit of a shame, but it's so pretty. Yeah. I, I'm like, like I'm, it I'm, right now. I'm partial to Android as well, mostly because I'm not I'm not a fan of the Apple ecosystem and kind of the mindset, I guess, yeah. um, behind the Apple design and stuff like that. So yeah, because like I, I have Android and I I like customizing things. I like I like I develop as well, and it's a lot easier to develop on an Android. Uh, I could also just sideload apps if I wanted to, where it's just like, hey, this isn't on the app store, but if you still want to put it on your phone, <laughs> you can just install it if you want. Um, so yeah, I, I just prefer Android because it just, it, it, it fills the needs that I want my phone to fulfill. <laughs> so I don't know if I can change it back now with my phone plan, that if I can actually like switch from an iPhone to an Android or what, I don't know if I can do that within my phone contract, but what I've been considering to do is either just get an iPod, whatever, like a cheap iPod, and then put all my music all that on that and yeah. keep the apps. But then again, that like that gives them more money because <laughs> they're making you buy more things, so you have to put space. I mean, I guess they're not making me, but they are. I want to say that they are. <laughs> or when I get my school, uh, there's an offer at my school for an Asus computer that is also a tablet or something. So I'm just like, I don't care if I need to pull that whole thing out, like on the bus or what have you. It's just as long as I have my music on that, it's fine. And I can reserve my phone for better things. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah, back when I had my iPhone, um, I listened to a lot of music, so I filled up the memory pretty goddamn quickly, um, especially because I had an 8 gigabyte iPhone 4, so um, that that's very limited. Um, so, and I listened to music in my car predominantly, um, so what I would do is I took out my old iPod Nano from like 2007, and I would just <laughs> leave that in my car and use that for music. I still have one of those, and my mom's telling me to use it for now, but you can't have video on there, and that's what I was... Oh, okay. I, I guess planning to do with it is to watch video on the bus, but it's like so. I don't know if you can, but the screen's so tiny, it's not. It's not worth. <laughs> Man, I remember having an original iPod video and how small that screen is, and it's weird <laughs> thinking back and using that screen to watch things on compared to today <laughs> with yeah. how big my phone screen is, and just it's yeah, it's weird. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, I thought we'd do table topics. Um, I think we're going to finish with Cal's pile, just because the list ones are always really weird and depressing. Uh, because we have two <laughs> guests, uh, I'm going to ask both of you, Tummer and Alex, to give me a number, 1 through 365, and I'll add them together, and uh, we'll do that question. So don't give me anything that will set me over 365. <laughs> oh no, math on the cage. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, 23. 23. Alex? What's 365 minus 23? Don't do uh, this. 400. <laughs> 400 uh, wow, 342. <laughs> Let's go with 300. Okay, so 323. I didn't really need a piece of paper for that. Uh, let me scroll down in the list. Do, 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 do. 323. What bad habits do you want to break? Uh... <laughs> This is actually a good one, thank yeah. god. Um, Alienating yeah. people. No, okay, go on. <laughs> <laughs> um, I tried to stop biting my nails recently, and I had really good success. Um, then I started school again, and I just get, like, not really nervous, as in, like, nervous in school. It's like, you, you need school, something to do. Not, not I, so, for me, like... it's nervous in social situations. <laughs> um, because it's been a long time since I socialized with other humans, so that is scary for me so my nails are kind of rough uh yeah, I, right now I i'm sad my, that I, I went back to that because i was so proud of myself for those like beautiful I, nails. it doesn't like i bite my nails as well um but i i i've i i don't know like it's it when, whenever i do it it's like like i need like if i don't have like something like i usually have like a pencil or a pen in my fingers and i'm like twirling it around or something um, oh, I if, can't stand people that click their pens. I don't do that at <sighs> least. I don't do that. I do that a lot. <laughs> um, I, I'm content with just twirling a pen around in my fingers and not just constantly clicking. Because I, I, I'm annoyed by the clicking. <laughs> even if I'm doing it, even if I'm doing it, I'm the one who's annoyed by I it. I only use clicky top pens, but I, I hate the people that sit there like, here, I have one right in front of me. Like, please. I think I can get mine. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that habit, like I, I don't, uh, I, I guess this is more than a habit. But I have a bad habit of like starting an idea and like drawing out plans for it, and then just leaving it as plans. <laughs> <laughs> like there's like so many projects or um, programming projects or phone projects or whatever that I like, like I drew out plans and like I drew out diagrams and stuff like that and what I wanted to do with it, and then I'd start it, and then I just not do anything else with it like i finally whenever i get to the part where i'm like okay i'm actually going to start like doing things seriously with it i'm like i don't want to do this right now i <laughs> i want to put it off a little bit um i would say for me it and it's been something that's been kind of popping up a lot recently is being like way too critical on myself like um because uh right now i'm in i'm part of the chorus for a production uh for a local community theater for sweeney todd the <laughs> demon barber of fleet street <laughs> and... oh, <Cal>. <laughs> i we're, we're i'm also auditioning for a sweeney todd production really and we, yeah and yeah that's why i was just like oh oh <laughs> yeah okay. but um as I was saying, like, I am not musically trained, and at about every rehearsal we've been at, I feel like I'm screwing up, I'm screwing up, I'm screwing up, I'm bringing this entire production down. But lately, um, from people who I know are, like, musically trained, they're telling me I'm doing a good job with, like, getting into character, and, like, they say I can sometimes be pitchy, but I know my stuff. 
And even one of my friends had to tell me, like he said to me the other day, he's all, I mean this in both a good and a bad way. The show does, um, you're not big enough to bring down the show. <laughs> so I had to like really think of that and I had to go, you know, I'm being way too critical of myself. I mean, I know I have to do good, but I have to feel confident in my own abilities if I'm going to do this right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what part are you playing, Summer? Yes, so I was just going to ask. Like I, yeah. Like I said, I'm a chorus member, okay. which means I'm part of the chorus, but I also get to be the bird seller and a lunatic. And I love playing the lunatic and <laughs> city on fire. Like oh, if you that's my song. I mean, I like that part of the just that little section of city. On, I don't know what it's in. It's like yeah. a, in a part of something, and I don't remember what it is now. Oh yeah, I think it's Joe. Yeah, I think it's Joanna, or I don't remember. Yeah. Well, yeah, the bigger woman sings something about city on fire, but in Sweeney Todd, there's like uh, lunatics breaking loose, and they're going like city on fire, rats in the grass. It's like this really scary moment, and what I love about it is our director told us to get into the audience face with it. Oh, and me, I'm I hate someone audience who, participation when you go I, into I the audience. Oh. I love it, and especially scaring the crap out of people. So that is, like, my song where I... First of all, learning that song is hard. Anything you have to do with Sondheim is freaking hard. But if yeah. you get that down, <laughs> and if you're like me who loves scaring people, that that's, like, my moment to shine. <laughs> I mean, Sweeney Todd is not a show for, like, the weak of heart. So yeah. if anything, the, like, be... I, I, the crowd participation, th that's like the least, <laughs> that's the least of your problems, Misty, if you were yeah. going to see the show. I was not going to. I saw the Johnny Depp movie, and that's about as close that to Sweetie was... Todd as I think I should get. That was okay. I, I that's, an o that's an okay adaptation. Like, yeah. I think I'm the only person in my cast who likes that movie. I see a lot of its problems, but it's a very Broadway musical when done, like, done as a stage musical yeah. not as the oh, yeah, tim burton movie i i tried i tried i <laughs> tried to watch it but i was no i and i watched it with al too and we watched half of it and i was just like okay i can't do this anymore for like my <laughs> own sanity uh but, and he was just like yeah yeah because i mean he's not as big as a broadway person as me but we had mm -hmm. already watched a couple of shows like he just knew <laughs> he yeah just, like he could get the exact same vibe i was getting so i was just like you know what i'll find a bootleg i mean i'm not condoning illegally <laughs> downloading <laughs> yeah on the khv well, podcast guys but i'm just saying that's, well i know. could say if, if you could find a specific version there's a version in the 80s that was recorded for PBS of the touring cast of Sweeney Todd, which includes L Angela Lansbury as Mrs. Lovett. And it's the entire, well, most of the stage musical, but to them on stage performing. That's great. I'll have to look at that. I mean, I know a couple of other musicals have done that too, where they have like Shrek the Musical is on Netflix. <laughs> which I thought was the weirdest thing, but it's so it's great, and it's that's my plug for my, my musical plug this week. Go watch it. It's so funny, and it's yeah. So and it's funny you bring musicals. that up too because <laughs> it's funny you bring that up too because there are auditions for Shrek the Musical in my town. I'm not 100 percent sure if I'm gonna do that. <laughs> Audition might be Donkey. easier than. I could probably, that's my thing, but at the same time, I'm, all, I'm just getting done with a musical, but at the same time, at least it's not a Sondheim musical, so it won't be as difficult, hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> oh, finally, we get to talk about some musicals on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. but yeah, my critic, my bad habit. Yeah, it's sort of me being critical of myself, but then there's a bigger issue of just, I don't know, I noticed this, like, during school, but I cannot... It's not that I can't focus on my teachers. I'm listening to what they're saying. I'm just bored. And it's not like they're not saying interesting things like they are. And But at the same time, I need something to do with my hand. Like, uh, so usually while I'm, I'll doodle on, with stuff or I've uh, made a new RP in the RPA. Because that's just how bored I was during school is that I just made the whole RP and I was just like, okay, well, I need to post this now. But yeah, I just, I don't know what's wrong with me. <laughs> But I just cannot, I can focus, but it's this weird focusing where I need to be doing something else in order to focus, and I can't, like, I can't do it anymore, so I'm, I have a job type thing that I need to do, I'm proofreading somebody's work, and I was hoping that I could print that out and bring it to school with me so I can just do it in class, 
because that's how like I don't know my mind was just not built <laughs> to not have class discussion I guess <laughs> so I don't know what I'm gonna do but I'm just I need to find something to work on and like get that done with because I I think it will become a bad habit when I don't understand what's going on because I can't I can literally not focus but right now it's just something that needs to not happen anymore. <laughs> Alex? Uh, bad habit. Uh, I guess it would be procrastination. <laughs> <laughs> it was never really too horrible for me, but now that I'm working at my internship in the mornings now, I don't... Every time I come home, I'm just, like, about to fall over and go to sleep at, like, 9 or 10 o'clock at night. And I have class in the middle late afternoon, so it's, like, I have to find time to do my homework. So lately, I've just been ending up getting up at like four o'clock in the morning to do it. And <laughs> I really need to budget my time more <laughs> so I don't have to do that. And I'm not feeling like I'm dying every weekday. No, yeah, I know that's a lot of my friends struggle. that do that though. Like they'll go to bed early and then wake up at four in the morning and just stay up <laughs> from then it's until so they have to get painful. ready for school. I mean, I imagine that it is. I'm, I mean, I have a lot of homework this weekend, but I've done absolutely none of it yet. I am pretty good with doing stuff quickly and maintaining quality when I have to. I'd rather not have that keep happening, but it's just, it's, it's, a, it's a struggle, man. School's a struggle, oh, yeah. and especially when your school starts at 8 in the morning, but you have to wake up at 5 to get ready. That's just, there's so much pain for me in school, even though I'm <laughs> enjoying going, so I'm not as tired as I thought that I would be, but I'm still like, I need 12 hours of sleep to function. I'm one of those people, and I have not been getting that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think my adult sleep genes are finally kicking in, because now I can get, like, five or six hours of sleep, and I'm like, hell yeah, like, that was a good night. <laughs> <laughs> Whereas, like, for years, I was like, you cow, where if it was, like, under 10 hours, I was like, nah, not getting up. So, yeah, yeah, I mean, it's mm -hmm. it's so bad. And it I mean, was. even last night, it was a Friday, like, we, I should have been sleeping in today, but I couldn't. I'm so wired to get up at five that that's what time I woke up, and I was, I've been up since. Oh, yeah. <laughs> today, I woke up at 9.15, which is when my alarm goes off for school, and I'm just, like, looking at the <laughs> clock, and I'm like, damn, I am whipped. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's so bad. And even when I don't remember uh, what day this was, but when Nick was talking about the announcement uh, for uh, two point, I went to go look at it. At, it was like I don't know three in the morning. I couldn't get back to sleep after that because there was the excitement from that, <laughs> and then I just I couldn't go back. And it was so bad, and I was just like, damn it, Nick, like, putting this in the staff chat and, like, on the site, because that's what I do when I, I was the up, only I one check the website. It was really great, because I was the only one up in the staff chat at the time. I mean, I was there. I was lurking. I didn't say anything, though, because I was too tired. Yeah. I couldn't get back to sleep, though, and I was just like, this is the school life, guys. Welcome, I mean, like, <laughs> Welcome back the, to school. It's weird with Japan, because how their things are scheduled, like, the West Coast makes the most sense because it's usually happening around midnight here and like 3 or 4 a.m. on the east yeah. coast. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, Cal, you want to draw us the table topics from your pile? Woohoo. All right. I think that we actually got this question. I don't know why I put it back, but... <laughs> okay. What is the best job in the world and why? And what job would you never want? I mean, best job in the world would be like sitting at home doing nothing and getting paid for that. Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, and never wants the opposite of that, like manual labor. <laughs> Speaking very broadly. I don't know. I mean, this is, I feel like we talk about our career plans uh, on the podcast. So I guess our opinions are going to be colored by that. But for me, best job would be um, teaching English in high school. That's what I'm going to school to do. And that's what I really want to do um, for various reasons. And that's really what I'm passionate about and what I really want to do. Worst job in the world. Um, I don't like... I don't know. Um, I never really wanted to work retail. I don't like retail. I worked at Best Buy for two months and I hated it. Um, and that's like not even like the worst of retail because I was just on the cash register. I wasn't even on the floor. Um, my job right now is pretty fucking terrible. <laughs> I mean, it's gotten better since I'm a manager now, so I kind of just sit around all day. Um, but I'm 
severely underpaid and poorly treated. Um, but it's better than slinging popcorn to the customers. So being a housekeeper, I think would suck. I read Nickel and Dimes um, by Barbara Einrich, um, and it's like a study of how. Uh, on minimum wage work, the average U.S. citizen, like, cannot live, and she tries to live on minimum wage work, and it's, like, impossible for her, um, and one of the jobs that she takes is, uh, as a housekeeper, so I wouldn't like that. I would be very bad at waitressing, because I'm not friendly or nice, <laughs> um, <laughs> so, th- yeah, that's my list. You guys can go ahead. <laughs> um, I would say for me, my, like, best job would probably be just screenwriting, mm. or just writing in general, just doing that kind of thing either for plays or for movies. I've been trying to get that off the ground. It's doing semi-okay. I finished a one-movie manuscript. But, like, the dream would just to be a writer and not be my occupation. The worst job for me would probably be anything in business because um, I took accounting as my major for a year, and I absolutely hated it (laughs) um, because one thing – There's like a whole thing with ethics that goes on. People who are really in the business, and I'm not judging everybody. This is, if you're a business person, there, there's a reason the world needs you, and it's probably a good reason. My sister's an accountant, so watch yourself. uh, Okay. (laughs) Well, they, well, some of these are just general business classes, not necessarily to accounting. But I remember in one business class, we had to do a vinyl thing, like we had to repurpose vinyl, make it interesting for the modern day, and the majority of people basically took advantage of tragedies like two vinyl, people sorry just vinyl like cd like before um, vinyl records okay yeah yeah they took advantage of tragedies like two of them did it on fast and the furious with um paul walker's recent death yeah and another person did it on 9 11 and i was the one person with like each of those groups saying like don't you think this is in bad taste or um don't you think you have to be careful but their responses were basically we're doing this to make money and people are gonna buy it It doesn't matter what the ethics are yeah that's fucked up yeah so i knew i couldn't be in that world plus i really hate suit and tie culture just the whole thing that goes into it like um i remember a professor was telling us about people who are gonna come visit all the business related major people and how they explained like the crazy things that you had to do when you're even at a uh, um food when you're eating with people when you're having like a food interview or you're at a restaurant like the craziest thing to me was bread you can't just get a piece of bread and put it in your mouth you have to get a piece of bread rip off a little piece i think you can dab a little bit of butter and then slowly put that small piece into your mouth it was just like madness to me that's psychotic what is that yeah. even? <laughs> yeah. The vinyl record thing, um, this is completely off topic, but uh, just as fun trivia, I have two pairs of earrings that I wear. Uh, one of them are Darth Vader, and uh, the <laughs> other is, um, it's actually repurposed vinyl. They're cut into circles, and you can kind of see, like, the grooves in them. So that's fun things. Those are my earrings. But yeah, somebody else, I guess. <laughs> I'll Best go. Job. Oh wait, no, Alex, you go. I didn't. I I was like unprepared. I was just gonna improvise something. You go. Let me think. <laughs> The best job is obviously in psychology. Like, come on now. Yawn. <laughs> that that's. I'm with Science. you, Alex. Don't worry. That's me. <laughs> and. Because you get to like talk to people and help them through their yeah, problems. Yeah, talking stuff. to people. <laughs> well, aren't you doing that as a teacher? But I guess you're not talking. To I'm talking people. at. You're people. talking there, at. There's not. <laughs> <laughs> it's basically stands up and everybody has to listen to me. Go on. <laughs> but you still get yelled at at parent teacher conference. I know, and I would love that. I love dealing with angry people. <laughs> and I guess talking about the worst part in psychology specifically is the research like my school is really research heavy and i have to do to graduate i have to do a big research project which i'm working on now and i (laughs) hate it (laughs) it's so boring you have to read so many long articles that use so much jargon because these people don't write for like the common folk and (laughs) And, like, running them is fun, but then you have to do all the statistics and everything. It's just, I hate research. And people have told me you could, you either love it or hate it, and I hate it. 
never again. Hmm. I'm. I mean, my my dream job thing would be obviously in programming because I love to be in a position where I'm. People essentially pay me to figure out things. Um, it's. It's a it's a weird thing because I mean when you're programming the ideal is that you're not spending a lot of time actually programming you're spending a lot of time just figuring out what you want to have programmed um so it gets into a situation where you're basically doing design documents and stuff like this and then you have um people who just like okay now code this out for me um so you, there's there's I mean there's I've I've talked to people in the industry and I I've, I've heard things from others where it's like a lot of the days you do maybe four or five lines I mean not even lines but like maybe a function or two in a in a larger project for that day and then you're just kind of done um, because otherwise you you run into well we don't we haven't exactly specked out this specific part of the project yet and other people are working on this part of the project so if they're not done yet you can't really do anything until they're done um, on the other hand of that I would hate to be just a I'd hate to be on the, where I'm going I'm going to be starting obviously because that's where you always start but I'd hate to be stuck in a position where people just hand me hand me things and I don't have I'm not solving anything at all they just want me to repurpose what they already have into something that they can use um, that has a lot to do when if, if they're whenever they, they decide like oh we want to do this in a different programming language so here's the entire program in like C++ and we want to make it all in Java now so just translate this into Java and that would that is the most tedious and boring thing ever <laughs> um, because it's like you're not even it's you're not even thinking you're like okay this is how you do it in C++ I guess I have to do this in Java now so it's just it's that's so boring and I've done a few I've had classes in university where I've I've had to do that and it is the most boring thing ever um it's not diff i mean i didn't find it difficult but it's still just so boring that i'm not sure if i would ever want to just do that day in day out mm -hmm. yep and cal finish this off Ooh, well i mean i don't know i for me i just like i i've always like just wanted to like raise my children and i think that i don't know like for me i think motherhood that's the best job in the world because i that's just I don't know. I don't really know why. It's just that's something that I've thought of. And I don't know what job I would never want, but I guess something in retail, because I can hear all these real ta tale horror stories from just uh, like my friends in multiple different chats. And I'm just like, that's not for me. I can't handle people yelling at me. I cry. And uh, <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You know, I, I would I, I would say something about retail because I work uh, concession stands at a T ball park, and like there's a well, good that's thing more and a bad food thing. Food service too. than retail. Food service, but I'm selling stuff to baseball parents. Oh, okay. And they are some of the some of them are kind of the scum of the earth. Yeah. And basically, two things go on there. One, you see the worst of people, but two, you kind of learn to really respect people who work cashiers. Yes. Yeah. I think everybody should have yeah. to work like retail or food yeah. service. Just like so I've I, like I've worked I've worked stands at carnivals and stuff like that. Um, where that is great when you're running a carnival game and they accuse you of um, rigging the thing. Yeah. Um, I don't care. Who are you? <laughs> yeah. Like I, I mean, this particular I don't even know how I w this entire thing was like we had um we, we we basically went to like a 99 cent store and we bought a bunch of cups and dishes and other stuff like that and the entire purpose of the thing like hey throw a quarter and if it stays in the cup or dish you get to keep it um don't know what length we can go to actually rig that <laughs> um, but yeah it's 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 interesting yeah. I would comment on the motherhood thing, but I feel like that would turn into a very long discussion that we just don't have time for. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm afraid now. <laughs> no, I'm not, I don't think of it in a bad way, because I think that feminism that says, like, you cannot, like, aspire to motherhood is not real feminism, and I don't agree with that. But I also have um, personal feelings about motherhood and just all of that.
I don't know. It, it'd be a really big discussion that is completely off topic from Kingdom Hearts 2.8. <laughs> so, um, those are our user submitted questions. Uh, does anybody have any community news and projects? No. no. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, so there are a lot of ways to participate in the Cage Fits podcast. Like I said, you can submit a question to the Cage Fits podcast by filling out the form link to every episode of the podcast or sending email to podcast at cage You can submit to be a member guest on the Cage Fits podcast by filling out the form link to every episode of the podcast. All you need is a Skype, a Skype account, a microphone, and headphones. And we would love to have you. You can submit a topic to the Cage Fits podcast by filling out the form link in the sticky in the podcast section. Let us know what you want to hear us talk about it. Suggest a spoiler cast for us to do anything like that. And then finally, you can, of course, just leave a comment on every podcast episode letting us know your thoughts on things like Kingdom Hearts 2.8 and whether you're going to buy it and answering our user submitted questions. So, that about concludes episode number 107 of the KHN's podcast. Thank you all for listening and have a Kingdom Hearts day.